Hello and welcome to Let's Play Kerbal Space Program. This is version 0 0.18. It's only been out for a couple of days, but it is by far the most exciting release. Okay, and uh, for this extremely short sort of test Let's Play, I am going to be docking. This will give me the opportunity to show off a number of the new features and also let me get back in the spirit of doing Let's Plays. Uh, I think I'm going to time lapse the construction of this, so I will be back in a second. I think that will do it. As you can see, this is a fairly simple rocket. Solid boosters. Oh, put that there. Actually, I'm going to add some stability enhancers, as they're called, as well. And uh, if you guys haven't taken the chance, if you own KSP, do give the part descriptions a read. They're usually clever and quite funny. So I will rename this the Docking Craft 1. Simple and to the point. And so I've added a couple of the new features. As you can see, there are batteries and solar panels just on the uh, ASAS there and some of the new science instruments. I have a gravity field detector, an accelerometer, and a thermometer. And I'll show you the, how those work as well. All right, just wanna make sure my staging is correct here. Put that there. Uh, I think that should do it. All right, let's launch. Now what I'm going to be trying to do is docking with a refueling station that I already have in orbit. It's in a 100 kilometer orbit, so it should be pretty easy to get to. Taking a little while to load. Oh, you know what? I should have added lights to this for docking, just in case we end up on the night side of the planet. Uh, yeah, I'm going to very quickly go back to the VAB and add a couple of the floodlights. So, utility, they're in here, right? Um, yeah, they're there. Okay. Scroll up to the top here, flip them around. There we go. That should make that quite a bit easier. All right, now we launch. Okay. So one of the first things I've noticed about uh, launching in the new version is that the uh, the main sail liquid engine, the large engine I have here, tends to overheat with these uh, large orange fuel tanks. So I'm not going to be pushing the throttle all the way up. I'll keep it at oh, about there for now. And all right, let's just go for it. Looking pretty good so far, not a lot can go wrong this early in the uh, flight, so... All's well. Bill's looking not too pleased with the situation, but he's not screaming yet, so that's always a good sign. And you can already see that some major changes have been made to Kerbin since the last version. It looks a lot prettier than it used to. My fuel is starting to run out, 
and basically every part now has one of these sort of uh, in-depth uh, little information panels. Oh, there they go. Now it doesn't have it anymore. So, for example, uh, here I'm going to start my gravity turn now. Pitch over just a little bit. For a rocket like this, I'll usually start at 8,000. I'm sure there is a precise calculated, most efficient way to perform a gravity turn, but really if you have enough thrust, you can just sort of guess, and it seems to work out pretty well. But as I was saying, you can see the new uh, resources, liquid fuel and oxidizer for the fuel tanks, you can go to the RCS tanks, uh, they have mono propellant, uh, and the science instruments actually, I'll actually turn those on, you can see our accelerometer is 1.5 Gs which is what we're reading down there as well on the nav ball. Our gravity field, 9.2 meters per second squared. And our thermometer, negative 38. I'm not sure what units that's in, but... Hmm. I'm sure somebody knows. Okay. And... Those should be using electric power which is stored in the batteries, but the engines, or at least the larger ones, contain alternators that supply electric power to the batteries, so I'm not worried about using up any power. But once we're in space, I can extend the solar panels there. I don't want to extend them now, of course, because they will shatter in the atmosphere. I think it takes just uh, about 10 meters per second of uh, velocity for them to shatter in the atmosphere, something like that. Uh, we may actually, yeah, no, we're a little bit too high, that's no problem, we can work that out with the, uh, maneuver node system in a bit. But we have a lot of fuel left, I'm gonna try to turn on our CS and pitch it over all the way and just give myself some more horizontal velocity here. suppose I should wait. Uh, here's something to remember. Always turn RCS off before you go into non-physics time warp, which I can't go into. Uh, here. Wow, the ship is under acceleration. I'm not still in atmosphere. I'll turn off. There it goes. Alright, what was that? Is that uh, 105 or so? So I'll wait until then. Okay, 100, that should be close enough. But uh, as I was saying, do not leave RCS on with the uh, non-physics-enabled time warp, because it, it will use up all of your RCS very quickly, or your, your monopropellant, I should say. I have lost several spacecraft due to that mistake. Because without RCS, you really should not be attempting to dock. Oh, my engine's overheating. I want to turn that down a bit. Alright. That's looking pretty good. I didn't expect this uh, entire first stage to make it up this high, so... That's pr I'm prob... I think 2,000 puts me... Okay, I, I guess I want... I want a little more. Oh, that may have been too much, but... Yeah, a little bit too much. That's no problem. And now, for the maneuver node system. First, I'm going to click on refueling station. Oh, click on refueling station one. If it'll it'll let me, it's clicking my orbit instead. Oh, come on. There we go. Set as target. And as you can see, you, oh, I. That is very lucky, actually. I already have a very close interception, so I can basically add a, maneuver, a small maneuver anywhere and tidy that up. That is incredibly fortunate. I think I need to pull it up a little bit. And uh, as you can see, I'm dra or perhaps you can't see, I believe my mouse cursor is actually disabled. But uh, you can imagine, looking at the maneuver node I have there, that I'm clicking and dragging the various icons to change this orbit. Try to get it as close as possible. It's at seven kilometers. Is that making it better or worse? It's making it better. 6.5. 6.5. 6.3. Oh, now pull it 
back a little bit. 6.2. 4 points of getting really close. You want to get it into, I don't know, I'd say within 2 kilometers to be perfectly safe. You, uh, you, I'm sure you could do it at, at a distance of, say, 4 kilometers like here. But I would not recommend it. 4.1. And now I'm moving the maneuver node itself because I'm not actually sure where the best place be do, to be doing this burn is. I believe it has something to do with that ascending or descending node there, but I'm going to be honest, I'm not really sure what that's about. just sort of fiddling. Uh, I might speed this up a bit if this takes much longer because this is a very fiddly little thing that I am doing. Yeah, I'm going to speed this up. Okay, 3.7. That'll be good enough. Oh, I left RCS on. Okay, well, right now I can show off the uh, new fuel transfer system. Might as well do it now. Uh, I have a burn in, a, in about two minutes, and I'll show you what that's like. That's the uh, maneuver node that I placed. But as you can see, if you alt... Well, first... Uh, right click to open up the uh, resources menu for one of the tanks and then hold alt and right click on the second one and then you can bring up the fuel transfer options so that is completing itself all right and now I have to find that maneuver node the maneuver node will show up on your nav ball as a blue sort of uh, arrow And uh, the green bar on the side, I don't see it, um, hmm, this does not bode well for this maneuver. Is it somewhere strange? Did my rocket spin around? I'm quite confused. Do I have to set it to target mode? Yep, that's it. Okay. So there is the blue arrow. Um, oh, come on. 37 seconds. Okay, so if you click on where you see the uh, speed indicator, you can see that I switched it to target mode. And what this will do is the uh, pink vectors will show the position of your target and the green vectors will show your velocity relative to the target so that is extremely useful oh okay I expected that burn to take longer so uh we're going to have to correct that I believe not a problem okay do the burn now and as you can see the delta V meter goes down and I may drop that... F here, how close are we? Uh, it's a good idea to delete your maneuver nodes after you use them. Just click on them, delete them, and then you can see what you actually managed to do. Okay. Uh, 
that's a really shaky maneuver. I'm not sure what's up with that there, but it's within five kilometers. I can uh, put another burn later in my orbit, give myself a little more time, and see what I can do to make that line up more. Now, I did the opposite of what I want to do. 4.9, if I pull it down, what does that do? 5, up, 4.9. Five point seven. Oh, that is not what I wanted to do. I'm not sure why, but this is a pretty finicky maneuver. This is harder to set up than most I've tried. Of course, I'm not really too handy with uh, orbital mechanics, so that probably has something to do with it. That's not really changing that much at all. We don't need to make a big burn here, we just need to make a little one. Nope, that made it bigger. See, this is how I've been uh, trying to figure this system out, just pulling various sliders, seeing what brings me in closer, and what brings me further away. 4.9, that seemed to do the trick a bit. 3.8, getting much better. 2.0, that's actually good enough to dock. I'll see how close I can get it, though. 1.7, because, of course, the close... Oh, that pulled us back out again. I'd, I'd be happy at 1.9. Okay, so, and once again, I left my RCS on. That was a mistake. Uh, we've got a burn in 15 minutes, but it's a very tiny burn. It's only a delta V of only 15 meters per second. So that, you know, I think I'm going to lose this first stage. That right now is just too finicky, so I'm going to separate that. And this thing is much more maneuverable, even without the RCS, with just the uh, reaction wheels in the uh, command module. I think that's what they're called, the reaction wheels, the gyroscopes that can make it maneuver. Okay, so I'm pointing at the blue arrow, and I'm going to time warp up to that burn. Goodbye, first stage. We shan't be seeing E again. Or maybe we will. Probably not. Eight minutes, seven minutes, six, five, four, three, two. All right, I can pull that time warp down a bit. Uh, and actually, I can probably show off the lights. Uh, there are some new buttons up here. Actually, uh, you can see brakes, gears, lights. We have neither brakes nor gears, but we do have lights, so I can turn those on. Uh, you can just see it catching the tiny bit on the side of the command module there. And there is also an abort button, but by default that does nothing. You will have to program your abort sequences with the action groups, which I have not gone into. And here we have the uh, scientific instruments. Nothing on the accelerometer. Uh, six. It's a little surprising how... Hmm. How much the value of the acceleration due to gravity has changed. Interesting. Um, ah, thermometer, negative 200. That means nothing to me. So, alright. A burn in less than a minute. And uh, once we get near the station, I can deploy those solar panels and show those off a bit. They look very, very nice. See the sun is setting over Kerbin, and we have a burn coming up. I'll speed up just a tiny bit. Now, missing a burn at something this simple, where we have plenty of fuel. Oh, like that, I missed the burn. And my engines aren't active, but it's a very short burn. Okay. So, I completed that burn, in a manner of speaking. Actually, that's our target right there. We're... It's, 
70 kilometers away. So delete that node and we're going to intersect at okay separation of 1.3 kilometers that is very very good a lot better than I would have suspected and the first thing to do is on your approach once you get within a reasonable distance you want to kill your relative velocity and that will sync up your orbits so come in closer see how close we, we well we're going to get very very close shortly and we are currently on the night side of Kerbin, but the sun is coming here. I'm not sure at what point the uh, part w the parts will actually load, but you should be able to see the craft, or the refueling station rather, fairly shortly. All right, it's coming in a bit closer. Now we're moving very quickly, so we don't want to put this one off too much, this burn. Okay, I'm going to start killing off some of this velocity. Because 80 meters per second in space is very, very fast. Oh, I'm using that incorrectly. I didn't have SAS on. Uh, I think I'll bring this down to something a lot more reasonable. We have plenty of fuel with these uh, little tiny engines. So I'm going to bring it something reasonable like 20, and then we can time warp and get closer. And we're going to keep getting closer. Actually, I'm going to check the map. That may I may have done that too quickly. Yeah, I think that may have been a mistake. I think that knocked us out too much. I underestimated the effect that burn would have. So, this may be a mistake. But I'm just going to burn towards it. Like I said, we do have plenty of fuel. So fuel is not a problem, actually, if I can pull that velocity vector down directly on top of it, that would be handy. So what I'm doing here is I'm pulling my uh, relative velocity ve vector directly over the positional vector that points towards the refueling station. So now I'm heading directly for it at 168 meters per second. But as we have just seen, these engines can change that very quickly. So I'm going to check here. Okay, yeah, now we have another intersect at 0.9 kilometers. That is very, very good. So I'm going to kick up the time warp again. Okay, we are very close. So I need... Okay, wait. I need to kill that velocity off as quickly as possible. Okay, that is reasonable. I'm just going to kill it all off. It's going to make things simpler. Bring that down to basically zero. And you can see it sort of twinkling as we pass over what I believe is the uh, KSC down there. Okay, so now I'm going to point towards it. Start a small room. Bring that to like five. And we are going to be getting in close very shortly here. Oh, no, I forgot to fill my RCS things. That's going to make this very, very tricky. We may have enough. We'll see. If we don't, this could get exciting. Or we could just miss. Usually, uh, you just miss when you mess up a docking maneuver. It is less likely to collide. Alright, so we're coming in closely here. You can see the large solar panel arrays on our refueling station one. I don't believe there's any mono propellant for me to sort of steal from that refueling station. I believe all that's left on it is uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer. 
All right, yep, yeah, that is the KSC, which is mysteriously underwater. There it goes. Pops in as we pass over it. Okay, getting very close, or reasonably close. And it looks like we won't have to use those uh, floodlights I put on this guy, but... When we pass over the night side after docking, I can turn those on, because they're actually very, very cool. Okay, coming in up on that refueling station one. And a uh, very handy shortcut sort of key is uh, press X and it will cut your throttle to zero. That is very good to know. Especially for something like this where it is important to cut your throttle very quickly. Alright, now I'm going to point back towards my target. Do another tiny little burn. Get this in. Two, two meters per second should be fine. Now once we get in very close, we should start using our RCS. We're not quite there yet. We will be soon. The uh, good thing about RCS is that currently in the game, RCS uh, jets don't push other objects, whereas rocket engines do. So if I try, try docking using mainly these small rocket engines here, I would have to worry about knocking the station I'm trying to dock with around would not be a good time. Okay, there it is, and you can sort of see what we're dealing with here. If I think I might be able to select one of the docking ports right now. Yep, I'm going to dock with this port, so it's always good to set that port specifically as your target. And there we go, that is done. So we're coming in fairly close. Everything's looking good, our lights are on, our battery's doing alright, even without our solar panels, we can deploy those in a bit. Assuming docking is successful, it might not be. That is always a possibility with Kerbal Space Program. Okay, we're coming in very close now. Uh, now would be a good time to switch to RCS. So... I'm going to control that from there. So that's another handy thing. You can uh, set it to control from your specific docking port that you're using. So that'll switch all your RCS controls. Uh, there is a new docking mode in the game, but I found it... I found it harder to use, actually, because I'm just so much more used to using the uh, translational RCS keys, which are H, J, K, I, L, and N. But do the docking mode is sort of nifty. It allows you to switch between a rotational mode and a translational mode, both of which are controlled by just the... Oh, didn't mean to go into map mode there. By just... Okay, what's happening? <laughs> The, uh, uh, give me a second. Okay. By just the WASD keys. Now, I, here's a handy sort of tip. You can actually very simply switch to the other station, and I'm going to point this guy up in a better way. Now, there's no RCS on this, so I'm going to have to rely on this tiny probe body to sort of rotate this thing around. But as you can see, it has a good deal of liquid fuel left in it, along with oxidizer, but no monopropellant. So swing it up. Uh, if I believe if I point it up just north, that'll be easiest. Or not north, but uh, normal to the planet, planet's surface. That should be for the best, or something approximating that. Hopefully that guy doesn't drift too far away. Okay, that should do that. And we have drifted a little bit, so pull that away. Oh, wrong key. And H, pull it in closer. 
Now, I'm not, I'm not perfect at this yet. But I have managed to dock several times successfully. It still requires a good deal of concentration. And there, there is a new... Uh, you have to re... Uh, that's another tip. You have to reset your targets if you switch vessels. Those... Oh, 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 too close, too close. Okay, could have been paying a bit more attention there. So, pull myself back in that way. There is a new camera mode somehow. Maybe I have to go into docking mode to get that? Yeah, I'm not sure how to access it, but there's supposed to be a new relative camera mode that is supposed to make this easier. I don't quite know how to get to it, though, unfortunately. So instead, I'm just going to sort of fake it. But what that will do is it'll sort of point you in the right direction and hold the camera steady behind your craft so you can line it up. Okay, nope. J is going to go the way I want, and K is going to be down. Move the camera. Start burning with this way. I want I to burn back up, and K to burn back down. So this is quite finicky. I'm not very efficient at this yet. Okay, so I need to change my angle a bit. Sideways, I'm looking alright. Pull myself down. I'm just sort of, ah, hit M again. Tapping. Very softly these keys check my sideways uh, okay a little bit there all right I'm going to uh, it's not a perfect angle but I think I should be fine the uh, docking ports have a sort of magnetic attraction to each other, so that should help with that, or it will help with that, I should say, and check sideways again, that looks reasonable, okay, coming in close, those connect, and there we go, we have successfully docked with refueling station one, if we wanted to, we could uh, select one of these and rename the vessel as something else, I am going to switch the icon to station though, but we don't really need to do that. What I am going to do is right-click here, Alt-right-click there to activate that, and transfer fuel and oxidizer over to my little rocket. Alright, that's good. And if I want, I can uh, take him out. Actually, I've forgotten whose this is. Is this Bill? Not sure. We can take him out for a... Uh, a little right and I've just realized that the docking port is on the back of my craft and my floodlights are pointing towards the front so that was a bit of a silly mistake but yeah you can see docking is a bit finicky but it's not that hard even when you know you don't know that much about orbital mechanics can I extend those? I can extend those while in this view. Alright, so I'm going to extend these solar panels. So you can get a... I don't want to crash into them though, I'll probably make them snap. So you can sort of see how those look. That one as well. And finally, that one. All right, so here is our very small spacecraft docked to refueling station one. And we can see the majestic Kerbin sunset there in the background. It looks very, very nice. And yeah, uh, I suppose now it's time to get ready to go home. I won't 
try to do anything too fancy with this, I could try to uh, land near the cripple space setter, or directly on top of it. But that's always ta always takes a bit of time. Um, okay, so now to undock, simply right click on the docking port and hit undock. It's as simple as that. I'm going to burn a little bit away to get myself away from here. Actually, how much RCS do we use? We barely used any RCS or mono propellant doing that, so that is good to know. And actually, if I burn to get a little bit further away, I'm going to rotate, oh, rotate back over there. Kill that, and show off the floodlights. Okay, made a mistake in judgment there. Oh, dang it, I made another one there. Um, yeah, as you can see in that very short amount of time that bled through all of our RCS, so I'm going to give up on that. Uh, I'm going to retract these solar panels because they will shatter in the atmosphere, as I said before. So you guys don't get to uh, see the floodlights there, but I can show them off to you on my Kerbal Space Station 1, which is parked in a higher orbit. Alright, so now I am ready to deorbit this. I'm just going to do this very simply, just burn and land in the ocean. Goodbye, Refueling Station 1. Now I actually really like these small motors here that I've been using. They are very, very nice engines for this sort of very tiny craft. Alright, just make sure. Hit X. Let's just make sure we are going to land in the ocean. Uh, we're going to land on the night side, so that's not so bad. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess I will simply... I could decouple this now. Uh, I'll use up the last of this fuel since I did take it from the station. No point just letting it go to waste, I suppose. Actually, I'll physics time warp up here to use that fuel more quickly. Okay, so all our fuel is gone. We're in a very shallow, not shallow, a very uh, steep orbit, suborbit, suborbital trajectory. That's the best way to say that here. And all right, uh, so we're going to land not quite in the ocean. That's not that bad. Uh, yeah. And also you can, uh, of course, activate decouplers through the right-click menu now, as well as parachutes. Oh, and as you can see, the uh, command modules also make a bit of electric charge on their own, so that is what is powering those floodlights right now. Oh, so we're coming in for a smooth landing. Coming in pretty fast, but not too fast to rip that parachute off. As you can see, it's, uh, uh, those floodlights are lighting up a bit of the parachute, but, uh, not a lot. And Bill is screaming. That is quite a lot of cheese that he's pulling there, so it's understandable. If I can point this at the ground, you'd be able to see the floodlights better, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Maybe? No, that's not happening. I can uh, just roll the pod over once it's landed to show off the floodlights a bit. Put on physics warp here. Don't wanna. I've had bad experience with physics warp and parachutes in the past, so I do not suggest mixing the two. But uh, these floodlights are also particularly useful for landing, especially on uh, tidally like uh, tidally locked bodies like the moon. 
there we go, and you can actually see our floodlight seem to be lighting up the inside of that parachute, so that's nice. Also a bit of a shadow. So maybe that's just the the, the sun coming through Kerbin. Which means that they haven't added the new uh, shader engine, which will prevent that. Okay, so coming in for a landing. There's no way this can go poorly at this rate. I say that it's going to explode as soon as it touches the ground. Alright. Okay, and now we're close enough. Alright, success! And if I roll over, you can see that the floodlights do indeed illuminate the terrain. So, I'm going to end that flight our successful docking mission, and just v ever so briefly show off Kerbal Space Station 1, which, after I built it, I realized, unfortunately, that it's a little too much stress for my CPU to handle, so there's going to be quite a bit of lag once I focus in on it, but as you can see, it is quite the construction. This was the first thing that I did in the new version of Kerbal Space Program. It's only uh, three parts, uh, sort of core, with a habitation module, command module, and then two uh, habitation and fuel modules with those large solar arrays. So that's Kerbal Space Station 1. I can't use it for anything because of the lag, or the uh, stuttering from the CPU. But, it looks cool, and if I go into time warp, you can see it floating majestically over Kerbin, much like the International Space Station. So, I believe that's going to be it for this video. I don't know how much I'm going to edit this in the end. Probably not very much. This is mostly a test, and me trying to sort of get back into the Let's Play spirit, which I haven't been in in a long, long time, which if you're a subscriber of me, you know, of mine, I should say, you know all too well. And there the moon rises, and the Kerbal Space Station 1 continues on. Alright, so that's all from me, and this is Jerothor, signing off.